You don't need money to start a business. Okay? The guys with the money tend not to do so well. I've always worked my buns off well beyond anybody I know in my peer group. I think you really have to know yourself, what your gifts are, and do a lot of it, and try to find some other sucker to do the stuff that you are not good at. That's the truth. This is your boy JT is back again with another video. Hey, you guys, appreciate all your love and support. You already know what this reaction is about because you saw the title of this video. So ain't no need for a whole bunch of small talk. Let's get into it. Yo, yo, shout out to JT Hustles for teaching people how to become entrepreneurs on YouTube and all over social media. Continue the good work, my brother. JT Hustles. <laughs> Link to his channel is down in the description below. Be sure to go show him some love. Let him know JT Hustle sent you. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew in today's lessons from a woman who went from being a horrific student, not able to read or write until she was 11, and working as a waitress later in life to becoming a multi-millionaire entrepreneur and shark. She's Barbara Corcoran, and here's my take on her top 10 rules of success, volume two. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, overwork and overprepare. I think the number one thing that got me to uh, where I am today is just Simple hard work, okay? I've always worked my buns off, well beyond anybody I know in my peer group, okay? Uh, but if you work twice as hard as something, you're generally gonna get twice as far, if not three times farther. So overwork is definitely the number one thing. I ever I agree with this 100%. Also, those of you out there that are fellow entrepreneurs that have reached a certain level of success, a high level of success, be sure to put your questions, comments, concerns, two cents, whatever you want to call it, in the premiere of this video and down in the description below. What I would add to this is when it comes to overworking and overpreparing, you also want to be smart about it as well. So by all means, overwork, overprepare, right? It's times that I spent three hours on a video that by the time it gets out, it's only 20 minutes long and it's well worth all of the time that it took to produce that. Also, when it comes to starting any of my businesses, right, I'm a firm believer in educating yourself first before you tie a significant amount of your money and time into anything that you're going to embark on. So I definitely agree with overworking and over preparing, right? The first step when it comes to preparation is educating yourselves. Right, learn what you're about to get in. And for everything I do, born out of insecurity of maybe not being able to deliver. And what an advantage that is in any situation when you walk in and you've well over prepared over the next competitor. Fact. You usually leave the situation with the gold. Rule number two, focus on what you do well. Focus on what you do well. So many people start a business and try to do everything from the get go. I think you really have to know yourself what your gifts are and do a lot of it and try to find some other sucker to do the stuff that you are not good at. That's the truth. That's what makes a great partnership or good delegation. Whereas most people uh, hammer away at everything thinking you have to be good. No, I knew what I was good at building my business. I was great at marketing. I was great at recruiting people. And that's what I did almost for my third year in business only. I focused on that. All right, you guys. Again, that's a big nugget. When somebody starts a business, they feel like they got to know everything. They got to know how to grow the social media, how to make the website, how to do the marketing, how to deliver the product or service, how to do the retargeting, right? And they overwhelm themselves feeling like they have to master everything. My personal opinion that this sounds like a broken record with me replaying myself, for those of you that have been following your boy for a while, is that I want you to understand that focus on your strengths, and delegate your weaknesses to people whose strengths are your weaknesses. So if you're weak in marketing, find somebody with a strength in marketing and you delegate that to them, whether you contract with them, partner with them, employ them, whatever the case may be, whatever makes sense. Three, have a plan. 
Tell everybody some of your key building blocks when you look back on your own life and your own journey. Yes. Uh, kind of rags to riches. Well, first off, the great majority of people who start businesses come from poor families. That's I right. was one of them. You don't need money to start a business. Okay? The guys with the money tend not to do so well. Let's pause there. Right? So, if you're somebody out there with a poor economic background, right? You don't come for money. Um, nobody around you left you any money, has any money. I want you to understand that vast majority of highly successful people come from the exact same background that you come from, right? There are far more people who started with nothing, had to be humble, learn, and build themselves up than there will ever be people who are born to a rich family. What I did is I was a diner waitress and I took a thousand dollar loan from my boyfriend and I started a small or I should say tiny real estate company in New York City to rent apartments. It was just me. Well, one thing I knew is I knew right away I was going to need a plan because I only had a thousand dollars. So I decided what my overhead was. It was exactly one hundred and twenty dollars a week or four eighty a month. And I knew it bought me my desk space, which I subleased. A princess phone, an extra dollar a month. What the hell? <laughs> She's so cool. Yeah. And the other thing it bought me was a five-line ad in the New York Times classified columns. Very important. But one thing I knew is I only had six weeks to stay in business, and I had to hit the floor running and make a commission fast. And luckily for me, I did. And now this is how I worked my plan my entire life. Simple. Every time I had an extra $480, which represents a one-month overhead, I took the $480 and I hired a salesperson because I knew I could afford them for one month. That's and right. when they made the extra $480, they hired a salesperson. Not they. I hired another one because they made the profit. And then I hired and hired and hired with the $480 until I had 100, not 100, until I had 1,000 salespeople and sold my business for $66 million. That blueprint that she just gave you today, granted, years ago, in New York City, $1,000 could go further than where $1,000 will take you today. Granted, we all understand that. But taking that business model of how much does it cost you to operate your business for one month and using that as a baseline to say, okay, once you save up that amount of money, assuming you start off as a one man or one woman operation, you take that one month saving and now you hire somebody and you let them know you're on a 30 day probationary period and this is what I expect out of you for you to retain employment beyond these 30 days, right? That should be your blueprint. I always tell you guys that follow me on this channel, successful businesses are ran due to successful business systems. Right, and you're gonna keep hearing me say this because I never know who may be hearing this for the first time. So if your business cannot operate without you, if your business cannot operate without whoever your star employee, contractor, player is, right, you have a weak business system, there is no longevity in your business, there is no generational wealth in your business. You need to have a system in place that whether you do it, your star player does it, right, or I do it, or a person off the street does it, we're gonna have the same results. When you hear a lot of people talking about getting burnt out in business, that's because they don't have a system in place that they can give to an employee or a subcontractor or anybody. They feel like they have to control everything at all times and you being a normal human being, right? Whether you like to believe you're part robot or not, eventually fatigue is gonna set in, life itself is gonna set in, right? The older you get. So you have to understand that you must have successful business systems. Keep on going. I think the most underestimated quality in all entrepreneurs uh, that I don't underestimate at all because it's the main quality is their ability to get over an obstacle and keep on going. You know, when you're building a business, you have your good days, but you have a lot more bad days and good days where the chips are down and you're not sure how you're going to make it to the finish line. Uh, but you have to really be able to take anything that hits you in the head or flies in your face or becomes an obstacle before it's a big obstacle and think quickly on your feet on how to solve it. This is the issue that a lot of, I say, wannabe entrepreneurs have because they want all of the fame and fortune and all of that good stuff, but they don't really want to be an entrepreneur. They're worried about, I don't want to get knocked down. What she just articulated was the fact that everybody gets knocked down. Everybody runs into some sort of hardship here and there. 
What makes a successful entrepreneur is not the fact that you never get knocked down. It's what do you do when you get knocked down? I believe what I have learned about every great salesman or entrepreneur I've ever worked with. If you can get in the habit of going through the door without the answer in our education system, tends to make you want to have the answer. If you walk through that door, people are amazingly smart. Once you're in there in the hot water, you discover the answer. You don't have to have all of the answers going into something. You guys know I'm big on preaching, having a foundational understanding. You're not going to know everything about every business before you start that business or start that investment. However, I'm not telling you to have blind faith and know nothing about it and liquidate your 401k plan and mortgage your house and empty out your savings to invest in something that you hope is a good investment. Still do your due diligence, have a foundational understanding of it, but understand that you need to have faith to the point where you're willing to step out on that faith with your foundational understanding and be willing to learn as you go through the process of what it is you're trying to achieve. Rule number six, find your strengths. What I wanna pause and take this opportunity to address is those of you out there who are adults but still say, I don't know what I'm good at. I don't know what my strengths are, right? First of all, we gotta be frank about it. All right, if we try to sugarcoat it and downplay it, lots of times people think that it's okay uh, when it's not okay. If you're an adult, and you don't know what your strengths are, you don't know what you're good at, then you have failed you, right? We can't blame society. We can't blame our parents. We can't blame anybody else. If you've lived long enough by the grace of God to become an adult and you have yet to figure out what is your gift, what is your talent, what interests you, and you made it all the way to adulthood, First and foremost, I need you to take 100% responsibility that that is your fault and you need to immediately figure out what is your gift, what is your talent, what is your interest. If you don't have any skill set, go develop one, right? The good thing about skills is nobody was born with a certain skill set such as nobody was born being a pro basketball player, being the best home builder in the city being financially literate, right? Whatever skill set you admire in other people, nobody was born with that skill set. So you need to pursue what your interests are, develop the skills that you would like to have in your tool belt. And by doing that, you're going to soon find what your strengths are. What do you catch on to quickly? What do you learn quickly, can implement? It just makes all the sense in the world to you that other people may struggle to try to understand. Rule number seven, get started. If you have a great idea for a business, the first thing you should do is get it out there. Uh, what people tend to do instead is analyze it to death and get up. Oh, we got to pause it there. Are you a person out there, like she just said, that when you have a good idea, right, you're supposed to put it out there, but instead you analyze it to death? That's why I love these reaction videos because for years I've been telling you guys from my perspective, but now I have the opportunity to present to you guys uh, bigger entrepreneurs than myself, people that have bigger brands, more money, all of that good stuff. And when they echo the same thing I've been preaching for years, now you got to argue with that man or woman in your mirror. Everything in order, get the business plan down, get their ducks in order, how are they going to finance it? I think there's a time where you have to give that a little thought, but the problem with giving a little thought, it leads to more thought. And when you give it more thought, you always find something else that you're missing. And as a result, you don't get it out there. Um, I think there's a tendency to feel as though you have to have everything in perfect order, be a perfectionist. And the problem with that is by not getting out there, you don't even have a chance to revamp your product, your sales pitch, your pricing. The only way you can test it is to get it out there in the market. So I think if you have even a prototype of say a product or a new service with basic pitch points to it, you want to walk out in the street, hit a couple of strangers and see if they'll pay you for it. That's the beginning of a business, not on paper or safely at your desk in your office. Rule number eight, stand apart from the pack. First of all, you have to look the part. 
All right? And you have to act the part. Acting the part, I have found, is nothing more than convincing yourself you're deserving of the business. Rule number nine, turn negativity into motivation. And rule number 10 is have fun. All right, you guys, like I said, I'm gonna link the original video down in the description below. Hey, go subscribe to that channel. As always, let them know JTL's essentials. I wanna tell you guys, in summary, the answer to how do you make money with no money. I wanna let you guys know that I did not invent this resolution at all. I actually discovered it out of a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And for your convenience, I will link a video that you can listen to at your leisure uh, throughout the day or whenever to actually hear this book in its entirety down in the description below. Pretty much without money, how do you add assets to your portfolio? The answer was IP. IP stands for intellectual property. Right, so you could take IP, create a business out of your IP with very little money, and in many cases, depending on how you want to deliver it, with no money. If you have no idea what that is, again, link to the book in its entirety is down below. Hey, that is a must read for all entrepreneurs that want to be highly successful and have longevity in this field. So feel free to go click that. Listen to that in its entirety. And until next time, to all my hustlers, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone.